One of the most commonly used features of Illustrator is Live Trace, which enables the digitization of pre-existing artwork, such as a pencil sketch or a photograph, through the process of tracing. To utilize Live Trace, open or place the image that you'd like to trace. Select the source image and either click Live Trace in the control panel or go to Object, Live Trace, Make. The resulting trace is a highly modifiable vector object that can be customized and manipulated in the same ways as all other vector objects. The tracing options are what control all of the parameters for your trace. A basic set of options is displayed for you in the control panel, but to view all of your tracing options, open the Tracing Options dialog by going to Object, Live Trace, Tracing Options, or by selecting the Open Dialog button in the Control Panel. Here, the entire set of options is available. Preset gives you a choice of 14 different starting points for your Live Trace, each one targeted toward a specific output type or look style. The next option available is the Mode Parameter. There are three tracing modes, Black and White, Grayscale, and Color. In Black and White mode, the threshold dictates your transition from the original image. All pixels lighter than the threshold value will become white, while those darker will become black. When the mode is set to either Grayscale or Color, it is the palette selector that dictates the tracing conversion. If automatic is selected, Illustrator will determine the choice of colors with the number of different colors used dictated by the Max Colors slider. Clicking the Output to Swatches checkbox sends the chosen colors to the Swatches panel for later use. If your Swatch library is open, you can choose to force Illustrator to adhere to the colors from the Swatch of your choice. The Blur and Resample options both deal with the original image before the trace is generated. The Blur slider, when increased, blurs the original image before it is traced. This adjustment can be used to reduce the effects of artifacts and aliasing, or to smooth out jagged edges in the trace. The Resample option adjusts the resolution of the original image, making tracing of high-resolution images faster, but keep in mind the downsampling may degrade the details in the resulting trace. Under the trace settings, we have two radio buttons, one for fills and the other for strokes. Selecting the fills option will create filled regions, while selecting strokes will create stroked pads. These stroked pads are applied to features in the original image that meet the required parameters set by the max stroke weight and minimum stroke length options. Max Stroke Weight specifies how many pixels wide a feature can be and still receive a stroke. Features that exceed this parameter are converted to outline areas instead. The Minimum Stroke Length operates in a similar fashion, marking how large a feature has to be to receive a stroke. Features smaller than this setting are not included in the trace. The Path Fitting Control has an effect similar to the Blur or Resample controls only affecting the trace instead of the original image. This parameter controls the distance allowed between the traced shape and the original pixel shape. The lower the setting, the tighter the trace will follow the original shape. The minimum area control dictates how large a pixel area must be to be included in the trace. Raising the value will cause smaller features to be left out of the trace giving you quick control over errant marks or lines on a source. Finally, the corner angle control sets the point at which a turn in the original artwork is considered a corner. Corners are then set to contain corner anchor points in the trace. Lastly, there are two view controls at the bottom of the dialog labeled raster and vector. These drop-downs dictate how the original image and the trace are displayed giving you compare and contrast options as you proceed through the live trace process. <laughs>